Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very glad to be here with you and to have everyone here worshiping and glorifying God. Um, had some health issues over the past two weeks, but I just appreciate the prayers and cards and all those that have been um, just showing their concern for me and um, also the meals that were provided. We really appreciate that. Um, at this time, if you want to turn to Matthew 16, 24 and 25, AJ will do our scripture reading for us this morning as we get started. Morning, church. And Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to come to wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Thank you. We are continuing our sermon series, Revive Us Again. So when we think about how easy it is to lose sight of how we should be living and the way uh, we should be living our lives for God, I think it's very significant that, that we focus on waking up because sometimes we just kind of go to sleep um, while we're living and not really focusing on who and what God's done for us and how we live our life in response to that. So the title for this lesson is I Surrender All. And my question is, is that true? Do we surrender all to God? Or is it easy to just kind of hold a little bit to stuff to ourselves to kind of keep control? I like control. I don't know if any of you know that. But I was a little bit out of control the last two weeks, and I didn't like it. When a doctor told me you can't leave yet, I wasn't very happy about that. Um, I, I wanted to be in control, uh, but they had a little more knowledge than I about medical stuff. And I had to listen. Some of you can relate that to your spouses. Sometimes you have to listen, don't you? Even when you not, might necessarily not want to. And I very much think that's what it comes to in Scripture. Sometimes there's some scriptures that we have to listen to and we have to abide by whether we like it or not. And to me, that's surrendering all, seeing Jesus knows what's best. And the scriptures are there to guide us in what's best for us. So the song, I Surrender All, was actually written and composed by a man named J.W. Van de Venter. I probably butchered his pronunciation. But he, uh, he says he wrote this song back when he was in East Palestine, Ohio. He said, I struggled because I was developing talents and I wanted to be an evangelist, but I was an art teacher. And I didn't want to give up what I was comfortable with, what I had been trained to do, what I was secure with, to step out in faith to become an evangelist. He said, all my friends were trying to talk me into just taking the call. But he said, it was a hard idea for me to just leave what I was comfortable with to step out in faith. And he said, finally, after five years back, um, he says, after five years, I finally surrendered all. And I followed the advice of my friends and what I really wanted to do and became a full-time evangelist. Can you relate to that? Is it sometimes hard for you to step out in faith? Because we like security, don't we? We like just knowing what what's the future holds to the best of our ability. But sometimes we do need to step out in faith, whether it be financially, whether it be our health, whether it be stepping out and answering the call to minister. How do we surrender all? How do we truly say, Jesus, I'm giving you everything I got. All I am, I'm putting in your hands. 
How do we do that? Matthew records for us the words of Jesus in our scripture reading today. Jesus said to his disciples, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. God has great plans and a wonderful future for every one of us. We're going to have trials, but he has a home being prepared for us. Jesus uses two words here, any man. That doesn't mean just those who are in line to be ministers or just those who are elders or deacons. He's saying there's no label. Everybody this applies to. Whether male, female, old, young, black, white, yellow, brown, rich, poor, somewhere in the middle. We all need to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Christ. Because if we lose our life, then we find it. But what does losing your life look like for you? What do you have to let go of? The invitation to follow Jesus is extended to everybody. But there's a lot of people who aren't accepting it. A lot of people who hold fast to different aspects of their life. It's a decision of each of us personally. I'm afraid some of us, when it comes to accepting Jesus' invitation, I picture Isaiah 65 too where God just holds his hand out and say, I'm just waiting for you to make this choice. Amen. I'm just waiting for you to choose to deny yourself and follow me. But it says in Isaiah of the Israelites, I spread out my hand all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that's not good and follow their own devices. <laughs> the disciples who follow Jesus, he said, come and follow me. And they each had to make the choice. They had to lay down their nets. They had to leave the tax table. They had to leave their worldly office and say, I'm leaving it all to follow you. What do you have to leave? What do you have to let go of to surrender all to God? In Luke 18, 22 through 24, one of the saddest passages to me in the scriptures. It says, the rich young ruler was invited to follow Jesus, but the price was too great. You see, God knew his heart and Jesus knew his heart. And Jesus said, Jesus heard that he's doing all these commandments Jesus heard this and he said, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad for he was extremely rich. Jesus seeing that he had become sad said, how difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The cost was too high for this man to surrender all. How about you? Is there something you just can't let go of? Is there something that you just think, you know, I, I follow you everywhere but this. The Lord can equip us with wonderful talents and even desire to serve him. He may give us a voice like an angel or a bullfrog. The bullfrog part was for me. Yeah. <laughs> but we all have to make the choice to use it for him. He can give you the ability to preach and teach. 
but will never fulfill his causing, calling until you accept the call when he says, follow me. And that means denying yourself, letting go of the things that you hold dear if it keeps you from giving all to God. How do we take up our cross and follow him? As he said in that scripture. First, he kind of defines it by denying self. We've got to be certain in our heart who Jesus is. If we're going to take up our cross, you got to know who you're giving things up for. Who is Jesus to you? Matthew 16, 13 through 17, Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi and he turned to his disciples and said, who do men say that I, the son of man am? And they said, some say you're John the Baptist, others Elias, and others Jeremiah, and others one of the prophets. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And that's my question to you today. Who do you say that Jesus is? And Peter, who's always the first to speak, right. steps up and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus answered and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it to thee, but my Father who's in heaven, who's in heaven. Before we can truly follow God, follow Christ, we need to define for us who he is. You're not going to take up your cross and follow someone you don't trust in. You're not going to take up your cross and follow someone who you think may be the son of God. But do, am I absolutely sure? That relationship, that following him supersedes all other relationships. Whether it be with parents, whether it be with kids, whether it be with spouses. It's the most important relationship you have if you truly follow Christ. Amen. You're putting your marriage in his hands. You're putting your health in his hands. You're putting your kids, your employment, your hobbies, your home, everything that's a part of your life in his hands. Amen. Are you doing that? Submitting to him, we place all, not just part of us, but all into his hands. Jesus knows who you are. And he knows if you are saying honestly, Jesus, I surrender all. Jesus says we must deny self. Do we do this? How tough is that? Paul said it best in 1 Corinthians 15, 31. He says, I die daily. I put myself to death because of what truly matters, which is Jesus. Titus 2, 12, he says, teaching that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We cannot follow Christ and the world. We can't serve two masters. That's the source of most of the problems in the Christian life, isn't it? Is the guilt that we feel when we try to do that. When we're not all in for Christ. When we say, Christ, I worship you in every aspect of my life. But me watching that inappropriate show or listening to that inappropriate book doesn't really count. Or me letting a few words slip that, sure, most of people don't think are appropriate, but that doesn't really count. I'm human. And we could go on and on with the excuses we make. But you're either all in or you're not. You see, Jesus said, follow me. Think of the places that that took Jesus and his disciples. Took him to the temple to worship. We're good with that, right? You're here. So you're good with going to worship. But it took him to the streets to heal those that were untouchable. 
It took him to desert places in the wilderness to pray. It took him before courts and governors standing up for God. It took him to the tombs to raise the dead. It took him to persecution and ultimate death on a cross, which he overcame. It took him to glory. Where's your life going to take you? That depends on if you surrender all. Picking up your cross and following Jesus is the most important decision you'll ever make. In Isaiah 45, 2, it says, I go before you and I'm going to make the crooked places straight and I'm going to break into pieces the, the gates of brass and I'm going to cut asunder the bars of iron. He goes before us. So what does that mean we do? We follow. We follow the Savior we find in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. How he lived and what he did. A little different from other sermons in this series where we start the song with the same song, we end with the invitation. I chose not to do that this week. Mainly because there's a song I sing, a we sing, I guess, that is probably the hardest song for me to sing. And it has to do with this theme. It is found, I mean, it is our invitation song, and it's called Above All Else. And it goes, you are exalted, Lord, above all else. We place you on the highest place above all else. And honestly, sometimes when I sing that, I don't know that I can sing it. I don't know that I put God above everything else. I should, but I don't know that I do. So the, the writers of this song are Kirk and Debbie Dearman. They were missionaries in Belgium in 1988. And in the mission field, things started falling apart. The dollar dropped suddenly and they lost their main source of support in the same month. They lost their home and they had to go live with friends. There wasn't room for their possessions, so they rented a garage, put all their possessions in the garage, and the garage flooded and they lost everything they had. And they're just like looking at life saying, what did we do to deserve this? Why are things going so bad for me? And they were very much feeling sorry for themselves. And they were sitting together in the room. And all of a sudden, his wife, Debbie, started humming, you are exalted, Lord, above all else. And the husband went, wait, what was that? Can you repeat that? So she did. And they started thinking, you know, all of these worldly possessions we've just lost, they don't matter compared to God and the reward he's offered me. And they together pin the rest of this song. You are exalted above all else. My question today is, can you say that? We're gonna have our invitation song in just a minute. And I want you to honestly think about in your own heart, is God the most important thing? Do you exalt him above everything else? Do you surrender all? It's number 171. We're going to have the words up behind us in just a minute. But God gave his son because of his love for us. How do we respond? Do you need to surrender all today? Who do you choose to follow? Part of reviving, part of waking up, is realizing what needs to change. And there's some things that I know some of us need to let go of. I know there are some things some of us need to stop doing so that we can truly follow Christ. I'm closing each of these lessons with Ephesians 5, 14. Awake, O sleeper, 
rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. We're going to offer an invitation now. What do you need to do to be making God the most important thing? What do you need to surrender to him? If you need to respond and ask the prayers of the congregation for something you're struggling with, if you need to come forward and put on Christ in baptism to become a child of God, we didn't talk in depth about that in this lesson, but we would love to study with you if you have questions about that. But if you need to respond, please do so as we stand and sing above all else.